we've got a few more slides here. I know there's lots of questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through the last of the slides here, and then we'll open up for questions. And I'll have, keep one microphone up here, and I'll rotate it around the audience so we can get everything recorded for the video. So this is just a little uh, overview of how uh, NOR and NAND uh, sales have gone. So you can see on the bottom here, uh, NAND really didn't start taking off until 98. But then uh, it achieved parity with NOR at about 2003, and of course has gone up since then. Just a little comparison of the NAND and the NOR. NAND is what was definitely most prevalent these days for data storage. Here's a little uh, overview of the, compared to the cell phones. So early 90s was the first use of uh, NOR flash for updatable firmware. And then uh, you can see a couple examples uh, of a, um, I think it's a, it's, it's a Nokia phone, a couple of Nokia phones here. I'm not sure if the upper one is actually a Nokia. But anyway, they, they used MMC cards and eventually uh, had internal NAND in 2001. And then with the iPhone introduction in 2007, things really took off. And uh, here's a little overview of uh, different options for data storage. Uh, it started with the um, PCMCA card in the lower uh, left there back in 1991 and the micro SD, which was introduced in 2004. And just to show you what, what um, you know, things have happened, like in the 10 year span, this is a really great example. 2004, 128 megabyte, 2014, 128 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. And also, if you buy a regular full size SD card these days, very often it's actually a micro SD card inside of there because it's, they sell so many more of those. Kind of interesting. And a little interesting thing about the Apple iPod, um, Ellie's out of the room right now, but he actually met with Steve Jobs in 2000. Steve Jobs told him, hey, we want to put an SSD inside the iPod, and we want the same price as a disk drive. And of course, that was not possible. They would have lost money hand over fist with that. So it wasn't until four years after the introduction, 2001 to 2005, that the iPod Nano first came out with flash memory. So that's, that's really kind of a barometer as to uh, how, you know, when flash memory really so started getting inexpensive. Just to comment, there's also a time that Intel caught in the NAND business. That's so what, also what again? We got into the Intel caught in the NAND business. Ah, right. It, it wasn't was until 2005 that Intel actually sold NAND. Uh, well, after that, but uh, we, the, the joint venture of Michael was formed in uh, 2005. Ah, uh, okay. So probably about 2007 you actually were selling NAND? Yeah. <laughs> so um, now it's that the, uh, uh, iPhone came out also. So here's currently um, uh, some contemporary pictures. These are the four main manufacturers of flash memory in the world today. <coughs> Samsung, Toshiba, Micron with, um, uh, with, uh, yeah, and, and, and SK Hynix. So those are the main manufacturers these days. Um, interesting thing that was announced a couple of years ago uh, from Samsung 3D NAND. That's getting to be very high density and very, um, not, not the greatest picture here, but you can look at these different generations. Um, the the uh, first generation was announced two years ago, 24 layers. Last year, 32 layers. This year, last year, we summit, 48 layers. This is what it actually looks like. It's, it's a whole other world with 3D opened up. Just the de density is just amazingly um, increasing with, uh, now that we're going into three, three dimensional uh, data storage. And here's, um, uh, Samsung announced a product, an actual 15 terabyte SSD. They announced that, uh, and that's going to be shipping later this year. It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing what's, what's happened. 